but it's Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To and on today's video we're going to take a look at one of the most overlooked pieces of diagnostic equipment you can use for your personal computer and that is the humble BIOS speaker. Now a lot of the time people possibly get these in a case you used to years ago, you don't so much these days, but they're starting to die out somewhat but I think they're still a very relevant piece of diagnostic equipment. In the modern era where we've got motherboards with LEDs and digit display so it tells you what the problem is with your motherboard and it's not booting that's all well and good but for some of us who can't quite afford the latest and greatest motherboards you do have to rely on either your own sleuthing or a little bit of help from your BIOS bleeps. So what you can do if you've got a motherboard or a computer which isn't working correctly you can actually use the bleeps provided from this little speaker to help diagnose the issues with your computer. Now it isn't going to fix them but it certainly does point in some direction so in order to find out what your BIOS bleeps actually mean, you can just do something very simple, and that is type in into Google or your search engine of choice, the type of BIOS bleeps you're getting from the speaker. So generally they're into several categories. There's either a long or a short beep, a continual beep, and various others. Again, depending on your particular motherboard, this may differ, in which case when you go into Google, type into the search engine, your motherboard brand name or the model number, and then how many beeps you're actually hearing, in which case you'll generally come up with an answer of what the problem is. Now they are relatively standardized to some extent, so if you get just one beep, that normally means that your PC is actually okay and it has booted. So in which case you would then look to see if your graphics card is connected correctly, if your monitor is turned on, all those kinds of things. Other things such as your memory normally, I think is one short beep and two long beeps. Again, there are some relatively standardized things. I'll put them up on the screen for you so you can see some of those now. Again, it's very easy to find out from a quick Google search. But just so you can see how this works in theory or actually in an actual real world example. So we've got our test platform here. We've got our power supply connected up. There is a CPU installed and we've got a fan installed, all that kind of stuff. But as you can see, we've already got our BIOS speaker connected. Now, if you're not too sure where it goes on your motherboard, Generally, again, Google is going to be coming to the rescue there or your motherboard manual if you've got a printed one. Generally, there'll be some ports on the motherboard on this particular one. It's right next to the main front panel connectors. This one on MSI boards is generally called FP2 or front panel 2 and normally has four pin connectors. If we remove this one, you can see the speaker itself only needs a positive and a negative connection and it is marked up on the actual section there. Also, you may need to look at your motherboard manual to see which one of the ports is positive and negative. Sometimes if you've got this connected the wrong way, it won't bleep at all. And I'll try and demonstrate it later, although I'm not too sure if they've kind of worked around that so it does work. It's been a long time since I've actually used one of these in any real thing because I've had motherboards with LEDs on. So anyway, I'm waffling now, so let's get on and have a look. So we've got our beep speaker connected. So let's fire up the PC and see what happens. So at the moment, no graphics card, no RAM installed. So we're probably looking at three bleeps. Let's see what happens. Three beeps, pretty much exactly as we expected because there isn't any RAM installed. So that's absolutely excellent. So we know there's no RAM installed, but if you did have your RAM installed and it wasn't maybe completely seated into the slots or it wasn't compatible or possibly you put it into the wrong slots, then the BIOS bleep would point you in the right direction to save you fumbling around and thinking, oh my God, what have I not connected correctly to my PC or just why is it not working? So let's turn this off now and we'll try it with some RAM installed, but no graphics card and see what happens then. So now we've got our single stick of RAM installed, which is uh, not always the best idea anyway, and we've got it installed in the wrong slot. So let's see what happens now. Okay, so pretty much exactly the same thing. So we know the RAM's installed and we know it's installed correctly because the LEDs are lit up and it seems to be going through the right process. But again, the BIOS bleep speaker has come to the rescue and given us our three bleeps to say that yes, although the memory appears to be installed, it's not right. So you need to look at it, which is again, excellent and very helpful for when you're doing diagnosis. So let's move it into the right slot and see what happens next. Okay, now we've got it into slot number two. So Let's see what happens now. Now 
Yep, it's not happy at all. And the reason because is the RAM isn't fully seated. So again, even though we've got it in the right slot, it's lit up. Our BIOS speaker has warned us to let us know that there is still a problem with the system. So let's stop messing around. Let's put both sticks in properly and see what happens then. Right, so now we've got both sticks installed. Let's give it a try. It's looking good so far. Hmm, what could be going wrong? Ah, I know what the problem is. The last time we used this motherboard, we had it set up with XMP set to a different set of RAM sticks. So again, because the RAM sticks, although physically installed correctly and in the right slots, the BIOS doesn't detect the RAM because the BIOS settings are incorrect from the previous time. So we need to reset the CMOS to go back to our default settings so we can then potentially enable XMP. But again, this is highlighting the usefulness of a BIOS bleep speaker. So now it's all installed correctly. Let's see what we get now. Now, some of you may already notice there's no graphics card and we don't have a monitor connected. So that's clearly gonna throw up some issues you'd think. There we go, a very slightly different bleep tone there. And just to kind of validate what is happening here, actually looking on the motherboard at the diagnostic LEDs, it is actually showing currently the boot LED, which normally means that the system is working, it's absolutely fine and it's uh, getting ready to run Windows if a Windows drive is installed. And it's just gone into either the BIOS page or it's trying to display an image. And because we haven't got an HDMI cable connected, again, we're getting errors thrown up. So again, this highlights the usefulness of the BIOS bleep speaker. Now, what I'm gonna try now is this CPU actually is a 3400G. So it actually has integrated graphics. So we're not getting a graphics error as such. So if I swap out the CPU for one which doesn't have integrated graphics and we don't have a graphics card installed, what are the bleeps gonna sound like then? Okay, so now we've got the 5700X 3D installed. We don't have a graphics card, so uh, let's see what this throws up now. The system is actually rebooting. I can see the LEDs doing that. So there we go. More beep codes coming out, and this one the LED on there has shown VGA. Now, I do appreciate that these BIOS bleeps are very, very similar. So you are gonna to have to kind of really differentiate them and maybe get a second person to listen to them and say, is that long beeps or short beeps or what's the spacing like? Ultimately, that is down to the motherboard manufacturer. This one is not that easy to interpret, I will be honest. But hopefully, this is gonna give you some ideas of how beneficial and useful the BIOS bleep speaker is. And for those of you that just like a little bit of PC nostalgia, you can actually get it so when your motherboard boots up correctly, you can get it to give you a single bleep just to let you know that everything is A-OK, -okay. of which I've actually taken some footage from my PC behind, so let's have a listen to that now in all its glory. So there you go, some of the potential uses of our BIOS bleep speaker. And obviously, being this is a YouTube video, there will be affiliated links in the video description below. So if you wanna pick one up, they are extremely cheap. So don't worry, we're not gonna get rich anytime quick on the sales of these, but any sales you do make through our affiliated links do all go towards helping out the channel, of which we very much appreciate. And hopefully you've appreciated this video. And if you have, smash that like button. If you wanna see more content of this on a daily basis, maybe consider hitting subscribe and also the chime notification. That way you'll be notified of future video releases. But for now, I've been Mike. This is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To. And hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks for watching.